and welcome to my favorites of 2021. I was just in the midst of getting ready for this video when the news that Ontario is going into a sort of lockdown. This is lockdown version 11.5, I feel like. Uh, we've gone into a lot of different uh, degrees of lockdowns. No more indoor dining beginning Wednesday, which is kind of funny because I'm actually um, going to have um, like a late lunch with a girlfriend today. It's probably the last time I'll be able to eat in a restaurant for a while. Um, and it's gonna actually be after my booster, which is hilarious. So hopefully uh, those effects don't uh, hit me right away. And yeah, there's a bunch of closures. Gyms are gonna be closed, so I don't know about Pilates. They'll probably have to cancel the classes for Pilates for the next few weeks, which sucks because I have a bunch of uh, classes, obviously, that I was looking forward to taking. And anyway, so I, as you know, I usually pick favorites or new things that I discovered this year. And I was looking at my makeup collection and I honestly only have a handful of things that I discovered this year. A lot of this in front of me is really just products that I kind of shop my stash over the year because I don't know, I just um, I haven't really been buying that much makeup this past year. I don't even know what's good anymore. So if you have a beauty favorite that you discovered this past year, then let me know because I am getting back into makeup and uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing kind of like what's what's new and what's good this year. So I'm gonna do this um, the same kind of format as I usually do. I have to take my sweater off because it's very warm. It's actually quite cold outside, but it's warm inside. And I'm wearing um, this knit short sleeve shirt deal. You guys know I love these style of shirts. I still do after all of these years. Um, but I wore a short sleeve because I, like I said, I'm getting my booster. So I wanted easy access, you know? So I've done all of my skincare. I've already put on my first favorite that I wanted to mention, which is the uh, Super Goop Glow Screen. And I actually quite enjoy this stuff. On a side note, I'm actually filming in front of a window right now, which is why uh, it might seem a little bit bright and there's a bit of a shadow going on, uh, but it's the best lighting that I could get, especially since the bow is currently in the office, which is where my normal like filming setup is. So yeah, just so you know, that's the situation. This is a very super casual video, as you can tell. Hopefully you enjoy it. Um, glow screen, I was talking about glow screen. So yeah, I've really been enjoying this. It is a great sunscreen but also gives my skin like a little bit of i mean i have it on right now so it has a little bit of a glowy finish this is not quite the same as um the what's similar uh the glossier future do for example that's definitely more of a dewy look to the skin like it makes your skin look dewy to the point where it might look greasy depending on what type of skin type you have and it's not quite like the charlotte tilbury a uh, flawless filter. Um, it's kind of in a league of its own where one, you get the bonus of an SPF 40, which is great. Um, and two, it just leaves like this really subtle like sheen to the skin, which I love. So this is almost, this tube is almost out. So I, I as you guys know, I picked up a new tube of it um, during the last Sephora sale. Now in terms of bases, so I'm pretty sure my one new base this year was the Fenty Beauty Ease Drop Blurring Skin Tint and I'm in shade 10. I love this stuff, I think it's great. I wore it quite a bit when I first got it and over the summer and I still do wear it on occasion, um, you know, lately. So this is what I'm gonna wear today, but I will do a quick shout out to probably my most worn bases aside from that, which is one, the Glossier Skin Tint. I'm actually almost out of this product. You can hear it's very viscous, very fluidy. Um, so yeah, this is great. And I also was really loving, you guys know I've always been <laughs> really loving the Chantecaille Just Skin. Um, they don't advertise the SPF anymore, but they, it still does have a bit of SPF in it. Um, so this is an older tube, which actually says right on it, SPF 15, my new tube, does not mention anything about SPF, but one of the active ingredients in there is still the titanium dioxide, which is a component of SPF. Anyway, these two I've been loving too. I think they're just really great, easy bases. Um, so yeah, I've been really enjoying those. But today I will be using the Fenty Ease Drop. And I love this because 
what is this similar to? I'm trying to think. It's similar actually to the maybe the Chantecaille just skin, but it is a little bit more, I guess, a satin finish. And it does come in way more shades, which is great. Um, so the Chantecaille just skin, like my biggest complaint really about that specific product is just the fact that it does not have that many shades. I think it has maybe, I don't know, five or six shades in total, which definitely does not encompass the whole range of skin tones that all human beings have. That's my only kind of gripe about it. The uh, Future Skin from Chantecai, which is a, a foundation, um, this is definitely more of a tinted moisturizer, although having used the Future Skin, I think this might have more coverage, but anyway, the Future Skin from Chantecai has a slightly larger range of uh, shades. Still not the Fenty range or the new standard of range, which is I feel like the Fenty um, line because they're one of the brands that was the small startup brand that released such a huge range of shades that it was basically unheard of, but also the new standard now. So if you don't come out with 40 shades, 40 inclusive shades. It's just like, what's the point? But yeah, so that's definitely a great benefit of having uh, Fenty enter the beauty market is they kind of set that standard, which is, like I said, really awesome. So this is just a really light layer of the Fenty Ease Drop uh, Blurring Skin Tint. And yeah, I just quite like it. I mean, it tones down the bit of the redness that I have. As you can see, I've been wearing a mask quite a lot these last few weeks. So I have like little bumps of red on my cheek, but I like it. It is buildable. So if you do want to layer a little bit more for a more, you know, even looking finish, you can do that. But I am pretty happy with this, this coverage here. Now for concealer, I am going to use a combination of the Becca Under Eye Brightening Corrector, which I'm pretty sure is a 2021 discovery. It's really hard to tell because uh, all of my makeup purchases are kind of blurring into uh, one time period, which is like the pandemic time period. So I don't know if I bought something in 2020 or in 2021. So it's just all kind of one time period to me. But I like this as an under eye corrector. It's great. I think it's, um, you know, it does a pretty good job at uh, brightening my under eyes, I would say. And it acts as a kind of a nice base for concealer. Um, concealers this past year, I'm trying to think, I don't think I bought really any new concealers this past year. I'm trying to think when I bought the Ordinary Concealer because that's my, my newest concealer that I have. Um, it's not my favorite. I think it's just because the shade range is, or the shade I picked out is a bit off. Um, but the one I've been really loving is the Kevin O'Quan, which is the Sensual Skin Enhancer. And this is in S x08 which is lovely it matches quite well for me so that is what i am going to wear on a side note i'm still loving my simple human uh, little mini compact mirror i've had this for quite a while now and it is still one of my favorite little beauty gadgets um i actually rarely i was thinking about it and i probably could have done without the fanciness of the simple human because I can only count or I can count on one hand the number of times that I actually use the light feature. Although I will say the times that I have had to use it or I wanted to use it, it's been great, but I probably could have just picked up a non-lit magnified mirror. But I'm very happy with this. It's, you know, lasted, I think I've had this for two or three years now and it still works great. Um, yeah, and like I said, the light feature is awesome the times that where I have used it, but regularly I actually don't turn it on. Anyway, Happy New Year. Um, I don't think I greeted you a Happy New Year yet. I hope you had a wonderful New Year's Eve or New Year's Day or start to 2022. And yeah, it's been kind of a quiet year, obviously, for us. Um, Chloe went back to daycare today, which is great for us because we have the day off and uh, we're able to do whatever we want. Um, I am, like I said, meeting up with a friend for lunch in a little bit. Um, I'm also getting my booster and I have some 
like errands and some curbside pickups to do. Um, for powder, I did not buy a single new powder this past year. So I'm just going to use this Too Faced Born This Way multi-use complexion powder in sand, which has long been since discontinued. Um, but look, I'm almost, um, out, well, I wouldn't say I'm almost out of it, but I've hit a significant pan as you can see. So very exciting. I am just gonna use a brush. Which brush am I gonna use? Oh, I'll use this one. Oh, remember when you would hit a VIB Rouge status at status <laughs> status at Sephora, and they would give you some sort of perk. Um, so one year they did a nail polish, one one year they did a brush. I think they had a different brush also. Um, but yeah, this is like a little VIB Rouge Pro Mini Flawless brush, which is fifty six point five because it's a little mini version. Sephora doesn't do that anymore, which is a bummer. I mean, Sephora's points system is probably the worst one on the market ever <laughs> because you don't really get very much from it and you spend quite a lot of money. So I still try to um, when I have the opportunity or a product's available at a Shoppers Drug Mart, I usually um, will buy from there because at least I can, you know, earn shoppers optimum points, especially if it's like a bonus redemption time. Um, yeah, it's just like a, a better value, I feel like. I am also just going to do a bit of eyeshadow primer again. Did I pick this up in 2020 or did I pick this up in 2021? This is the NARS Tinted Smudge Proof Eyeshadow Base. I feel like I picked it up this year. I feel like I didn't wear enough eyeshadow last year to actually think to myself, hmm, maybe you should get an eyeshadow base. Um, so that could be a 2021 purchase, but regard but regardless, I have been enjoying it. And um, yeah, I got a tinted version. So I think it's like the medium tint or something. I probably could have just used the plain one too, but I like the little tint that this gives. So let's talk bronzers. Um, again, no new bronzer purchases this past year. Um, I'm still loving the Fenty Beauty uh, Instant Warmth Bronzer, which is an Island Ting. Really like this. Um, this one almost seems more of like a summer shade for me because it is a little bit warm and deep for me. Um, but if I use it sparingly in the summer or in the winter time, I can get away with it. My winter shade probably is more this one, which is the um, uh, coconut, coconut perfect tan, coconut perfect tan, Omega bronze, fantastic. That uh, is a mouthful. Um, but this is for Marc Jacobs and again has been long discontinued and Marc Jacobs doesn't even sell makeup anymore, which is kind of crazy. Um, so yeah, this is great. And again, I love the warmth of this bronzer and yet it's a little bit more neutral than some of my other bronzers. And the tone is great because I feel like it just works really well with my skin tone for the majority of the year, which like I said, I uh, am a little bit more, I say fair, you know, really loosely, as you guys know, I'm, I'm naturally more tan. Um, but I do get more tan in the summertime, obviously, and this is just a really nice little bronzer for me. This is, by the way, not a NARS brush. Um, I always get questions about it, and I try to put it in the description box below, but this is not the Yachio brush. This is actually a... What brand is this? I'm already blanking. I can't remember off the top of my head. Wow, it's like right off the tip of my tongue, but I can't remember. Um, but I will put it here because this is not a NARS Yachio brush. It was like a sixth of the cost, to be honest. And I think I found it at Winners because this brand is not readily available in Canada. And I just happened to score it at Winners. I am going to just quickly look that up because it's going to drive me crazy. It's not Hakuhodo. Let's see. Japanesque. That's it. Oh, it was like right there. But yeah, this is from, oh shoot, where'd it go? Uh, Japanesque. So this is a Japanesque brush. So if you are in Canada, um, as far as I know, correct me if I'm wrong, but yeah, Japanesque is not readily available. Um, but if you are in Canada, you might be able to find it at Winners. Um, it's kind of hit and miss, but that is where I have found some Japanesque brushes. Uh, moving on to blushes. Um, again, blushes were not... I didn't buy a single blush in 2021. 
Um, more of like shopping my stash. So I've been really loving the Burberry Tangerine. I've been using that a lot lately. This one was kind of a sleeper hit for me in 2021. I bought it a couple few years ago, but this is from Clinique and this is Precious Posey in their Blushing Blush Powder Blush. I remember laughing every single time I had to say that. It's quite a mouthful. So this reminds me a lot of NARS Orgasm, but without obviously the, the name. <laughs> it's a it's like a peachy pink with like a bit of a gold micro dust to it. And yeah, I actually have been really enjoying this blush. I think I might wear that one today. The other blush that I've been really loving is this one from Hourglass, which is At Night. This one I know for sure was a 2020 purchase. That's when it came out. Um, and I just really love it. And this I love it works well, like relatively well all year round, but I especially love this in like the fall and the winter. I just love that like reddish berry color on the cheeks, um, especially when it's cold because I feel like my, my cheeks naturally, naturally flush that way. But for today, I am going to use this blush, which is from Clinique. And yeah, I just really like this blush. It's like really nice and pink and easy and there's a bit of shimmer, but it's not too much shimmer. And yeah, I definitely should have used a different brush, but I realized I only brought one blush brush over with me. But yeah, I just like really nice and fun and fresh. For highlighter, I really kind of fell back in love with this NARS palette, which is uh, discontinued. Well, it was limited edition, um, but this is the Banque de Sable, Sable, Sable um, highlighting palette. I haven't bought anything from NARS in a really long time, but wow, that squeaky packaging is a bit annoying. I, I love this palette though, because it has like your pale, um, like moonstone shade, your kind of more universal, kind of champagne shade, and then you have more of a rose gold shade. And I happen to love all of those shades. So sometimes I mix them all together, sometimes I don't. Um, today, I think I'm gonna go for more of like the rose gold shade. This one is a Hakuhodo brush. It's like a really fluffy little brush. It just picks up like a tiny amount. I can just put it everywhere. And then for eyes, my only like eyeshadow purchase was the Glossier Monochromes, which they're great. I actually really, really enjoy these. I have four different um, colorways. So I have Almond, I have Heather, which I think is like the kind of purpley pink one, um, Teak, which is more of like a darkish brown. And then this one is Clay, which is like a really warm terracotta shade. My most worn shade has definitely got to be either almond or teak. Um, today, I think I'm going to go for almond just because I'm not actually going to put too much eyeshadow on. I just want like a little light wash of this matte shade. So what I love about the monochromes is one, they're really easy and kind of no brainers. So you have one color family per palette and you have a matte, a satin and a glitter. And yeah, they're great because they all blend well together and you can choose basically whichever shade that you want. They blend really nicely. Um, you know, they all work well together. You can also mix and match other palettes together. Um, but yeah, I just love a no fuss eyeshadow look because one, I'm super uh, not artistic whatsoever. So it's uh, more of a struggle for me when I'm picking from like a 12 pan palette. <laughs> to figure out what kind of look I go for and I always gravitate towards similarly shaded colors anyway or similarly toned colors um, and this just takes all the guesswork out of it for me which is great because in the mornings when I'm like rushing to get ready like I don't have time to be doing like color science in my brain trying to figure out what kind of goes well together um, on the weekends when I have a little bit more time I don't mind but yeah, something just like quick and easy without fuss is like perfect. That's my jam. Plus, I love how you can just do a single color and there's like enough dimension that it looks still fun and cute and like you put a bit of effort in. I don't think we need to talk about eyebrows because I use the same product all the time. I did use something slightly different in 2021 when I picked up the Kosas um, airbrow, I think. 
I love the brush on the Kosas Airbrow. I'm pretty sure it's called the Airbrow, but it's their um, eyebrow gel. The brush is so good, and I'm actually still considering picking up a new one in 2022 because it was that good. It's just that it went off on me very quickly, and I just remember like putting it on one day and then after 30 minutes of thinking is something on my hands like something smells really weird and it turns out it was on my brows um so but other than that it's actually a great product which i was really enjoying but that was my only uh qualm about it is that uh, it because it's a more natural product natural natural brand natural ingredients um yeah that there's a there's a chance that it might go off a bit quicker uh for mascara and again i Forgot to curl my lashes before I put on eyeshadow. Um, but this eyelash curler that I'm currently using is from Tweezerman and definitely one of my better purchases of 2021. Um, I just got this at the tail end of 2021, but it's great because it fits my eyes perfectly. It's such a great shape for my eyelashes. Um, this is like the Pro Master Curl, I think. Um, and uh, yeah, I've been really enjoying it. I also tried Eye Envy this year uh, for my lashes so that I could get like longer, stronger lashes. And I really like it. And I'm, I need to actually get a new tube of it because I'm almost out. This is a mascara, my only mascara purchase, or I guess new mascara purchase this year, which is from Rare Beauty. And you know what? I like it. I was a bit on the fence. I mean, I wouldn't say it's like my ultimate favorite one of all time. That's still a tie between the Unlimited Mascara from Hourglass and the Glossier Lash Slick. But I quite like this for a slightly more spidery look to my lashes. Um... And yeah, it works well. It lasts all day long. And I don't find it to be too, or as lengthening, I guess, as the other mascaras I just mentioned. But it does uh, coat them really nicely and like helps define them a little, a little bit. I don't love these for the bottom lashes though. So if I'm gonna put mascara on my bottom lashes, it'll usually be the Glossier Lash Slick. Okay, I'm going to do a little spritz spritz. I have gone back to using this Urban Decay All Nighter Long Lasting Makeup Setting Spray, which is great. Um, yeah, I mean, I've always really loved setting sprays and I always kind of waffle back and forth between other brands and Urban Decay. And this is probably just like one of my favorite products. I always go back to it and I always never regret it basically. So I discovered the Chanel, what is the full name of this? The La Rouge Duo Ultra Tenu Gloss. So it's basically a liquid lipstick from Chanel and it's been a while since I bought anything from Chanel, I'll be honest with you. And then in the span of two weeks, I ended up buying three of these liquid lipsticks and wow, these I don't know if they were just like on sale for a period of time, so everybody was like buying them up, but they were really hard to come by for a little bit. All of the shades were sold out, and so I was really lucky to be able to find, which one was my favorite? Intense Caramel, that was probably my, my most favorite um, purchase, lip product wise, um, this past year. It's just like a really great neutral color. I just, I really love that color. Today though, what will go best with my look? I think I'm gonna go for light rose, which is funnily enough, not really a rose as it is more of like a pinky peach. I feel like this is definitely more of a summer color, but you know what? I'm welcoming the uh, summer vibes today because it is quite chilly outside. When I came, went out this morning to go to Pilates class, uh, it said it was minus 21. Um, so yeah, very chilly. Okay, so this, as you can see, like that doesn't look like a rose to me. That definitely looks more of like a peachy coral. This didn't come with instructions, but what I like to do is obviously apply the color first. So now that I've applied a layer, I basically just wait until it gets really dry to the point that it's uncomfortable, and then I put the gloss on. So it usually takes a few seconds. Okay, I think we're ready for the gloss. So the gloss, it's a clear gloss on this weird bristle brush tip applicator. And then I'm just gonna layer it all over. If you've waited the appropriate amount of time before applying, 
you shouldn't get any transfer on that brush. So you can see there's like nothing coming off. I have found that if I'm rushing and I don't let it fully dry, um, some of the product transfers off and then it just doesn't wear as well throughout the day. Okay, so that is getting ready using my 2021 favorites. Not too many makeup purchases this past year. I'm not sure if next year will be, or I guess this year, 2022, will be any different, but we shall see. Um, I hope you enjoyed watching this video. There is going to be a part two, which I will be filming later today, which will be up a few days after this video, where I talk about tools that I've been loving and just kind of miscellaneous things. So hair um, and tools and tech things and maybe clothes. So a lot of you have been asking to see kind of more of that stuff too and not just the beauty stuff. So you can catch those favorites in part two. But in the meantime, happy new year. I hope you're having a wonderful start to 2022 and I will see you in my next video.